Good morning. I'm Gordy Locke, coming to you live from South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. It is Tuesday, April 26th. We had a wonderful time worship Sunday as Pastor Keith preached about Jesus visiting with his disciples on the shore of Galilee after his resurrection. So he visited, this is after his resurrection, on the shores of Galilee. His disciples were contemplating their life after Jesus' death. His disciples were sad about how they had been, not been there for Jesus when he was captured, arrested by the Roman soldiers and taken away and crucified. They hadn't been there for Jesus. So they were kind of sad. They were kind of wondering what was next in their life. Um, Jesus unexpectedly came to them to bring hope for their future. Jesus had prepared a breakfast for them. And then it reads in John 21, 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. What a, what a great illustration. What a, <laughs> what a great way of drawing something out of Peter, of his love for Jesus. And a lot of times confession like that is important in our own lives. Uh, what we actually believe, the confession of our lips. Um, do we really love Jesus? Do we really want to serve him? Do we really want to follow him and do what he's called us to do? Uh, I really believe it was really great how Jesus ministered to John. But not, not or excuse me, Peter, but not only um, Simon Peter, but all the other disciples and made them contemplate their lives and how much they really loved Jesus and what they had to do next in their lives. What a great message. Uh, what a great uh, practical thing that we can apply to our lives. Do we love Jesus? Will we follow him? Will we do what he's called us to do? And he brought that out too. Jesus inspired them to go and use their life experiences, wisdom, and the great example that Jesus had blessed them with. He shared again, I remember him sharing, actually when I was in Colorado, about the life of Bill Borden. And um, he shared again Sunday about the life, what a, what a wonderful life. You can probably Google that, check into it, or actually just watch the message on, from Sunday morning about the life of Bill Borden. Um, something that I'll never forget, and I wrote it down after I heard his message, and this was probably two or three years ago, I was still in Colorado, that um, one of the quotes from Bill Borden, through all of his hardships and um, things he had to bear in life, no reserve, no regret, or excuse me, no reserve, no retreat, no regrets. I sent that again. Um, I shared that with a friend of mine in Colorado and I sent it again, I texted to him again yesterday how, how meaningful that is just in our lives. The things that no reserve, no retreat, no regrets. What a, what, a wonderful, what a wonderful thing to grasp and not just think about, memorize, but to apply to our lives. Last week I talked about finishing well. It's, uh, I was inspired by the life of Jesus and even the death of his death on the cross where he ministered to the um, criminal next to him. Uh, it even with his last breath of life, he only had a few minutes to live, maybe less than a few minutes on the cross, and the thief or the criminal reached out to him, and Jesus finished well. He ministered to that criminal on the cross. And we're called to minister. We're called to be there for people uh, in their time of need. Um, so after church service, I walked out. It was pretty interesting. There's a young man that uh, is a 
She runs, does hurdles, and I believe a sprint, relay, different things for Harbor Creek High School. And I saw him on the way out. I won't mention any names. People probably know who he is here that go to church. But um, walked out, and I noticed he had gotten quite a haircut. I mean, his hair was pretty long before that. So I kiddingly said to him and his mother, his mother was standing there with him, I said, uh, so now you can see the finish line. And uh, there was a few chuckles around the room, but uh, we're running a race. And we are, we're all running our own race. And it's, it's neat how we, can, <laughs> we need to just keep on running. So that's, that's why this morning, um, the title of my devotion is running our race well. Let's, I'm going to read again from Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. I, I read from that last week, but I'm going to con- actually continue on, um, not just today, but I'm, I have, uh, there's other things I'd like to share from this scripture and tie in other scriptures in with it. But um, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews says, and there, I don't hear much spoken about this, but Hebrews says, and we'll look at the beginning, therefore, since we have so great a crowd of witnesses surrounding us. It is speaking of all the people who have run the race before us. Hebrews 11 tells of the faith of Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Moses, and others, and how they endured sufferings, overcame overcame obstacles, and ran the race of faith which was before them. We each have obstacles in our personal lives and in our churches. But you and I are not the first to run the Christian race. Others have gone before us. So we can look at those heroes of the faith. Some, sometimes they call them that. And that's, we can read about the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. That's what they call it, chapter sometimes. So if you want to look for the heroes of faith, look at chapter 11. Of course, there's all those in the New Testament. My I mean, other than Jesus, I think of Paul, all that he endured for the kingdom of God, all those the shipwrecks and imprisonments and beatings and stonings and all those things he went through, imprisonments, unjust imprisonments, for just for the gospel to carry out what God had planned for him. So there are many things that weigh us down, a mixture of regrets, anxiety, and worry. And maybe you're, we're struggling under the burden of unforgiveness, grudges, and fear. Or perhaps you're lugging around lust, greed, and pride. Regardless of the specifics, we all carry the weight of our sin. We forget to confess and take it to the Lord. As Christians, we know in 1 John 1, 9, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. So why do we choose to stumble around, sweating and struggling? instead of passing it to him. In Romans 8.1, it states, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So a lot of times we just need to ask for forgiveness, maybe things we've done in our lives. And also with that, asking for forgiveness, to repent of those things that we've done or that are doing now that we haven't, can't let go of. Um, just like physical training, Spiritual training takes place if you want to achieve new goals. If your goal is to run with endurance spiritually, then you must do daily work to build those new habits and persevere. Remember, no one runs a 5K the first time when when they've done nothing previously other than laying on a couch. There's an entire exercise program dedicated to bridging the gap. Think about that. I've Well, I was in track years ago, but never 
uh, kept up with my running. But I know right now if I had to go out and do any kind of running, I would really be hurting physically, and maybe for days or weeks, I'm not sure. Um, I've, I've walked a decent amount, but running is something else. But if we're going to run that race... We need to be prepared for that run. We need to be prepared to do what, what we need to to run the race well. And those, we could look to those that, that went before us, how they endured and how they lived the life. Uh, we can train. We can get all those things that are, that are slowing us down, those things that are just keeping us from really running a good race. Uh, like what I stated earlier about grudges and anxiety and fear, all those things that just seem to work against us and, and that race that we have to run. To build endurance spiritually, we need to read our Bible daily, pray, surround yourself with current cloud of witnesses. Maybe in your church, maybe there's those around us. Maybe you could be part of a, a small group, whatever that would be, um, uh, a women's group, a men's group, uh, some type of group, some type of group that would uh, help us to grow, not only uh, individually, as we study and read, but also um, together in a group to grow and to run the race together. Um, there's, I see different track meets where a lot of times a couple of runners will t- kind of run together and um, help each other out, maybe encourage each other, maybe just pick up the pace or whatever they do. It's neat to see high school runners, and I plan on going to a few more meets this year to see high school runners because it's, it's just, you know, that's beginning stages maybe possibly of a career. But I think of our own lives, that, that the running, the preparing, the nurturing um, just to run that race, the race that God's called us to do. And we each have our own race. We're at different places in our lives. But we're not alone. There are those around us that want to run with us. There are people here, there's um, lay leaders or staff that wants to run with you as we run the race together. And that we would start well if we're at that place or we're in the middle of our race or we're near the end of the race in our lives, that we finish well. And while we're running the race, to bring others along with us and help us all to have a good race together. So that's the important part. We're not alone. Um, What a blessing it is to be a part of the body of Christ. Let's help each other run a good race. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for um, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Uh, Thank you for this time with uh, those out there that... uh, I can share this with. I, Lord, I pray that it would just touch your hearts. And Lord, that we would apply these things to our lives and live the life and run the race well. And I just pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I thank you for joining me, whether live or later on today, tonight, whenever. And I just uh, pray that you would have a blessed week. I'm going to have, uh, I'll be on vacation this coming week, so I will have Sean Gotham um, next Tuesday morning. We'll be here and sharing devotionals, so I'll uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime. See you in church.